Hi everyone, welcome to Sculptured Painting. I'm Miss Leslie and today we are going to be working on this beautiful piece called Flowers on a Blue Field. Today we're going to be doing part one of a two-part video series for this project. To complete this project you'll need the following items. A canvas, tissue paper, tape, Mod Podge, and a stiff bristled brush. We're gonna start with our tape. And I wanted to show you guys a technique that was discovered or shared with us by two of our students. Nikita and Kareen both came up with this one separately. So here's a good way to start making our tape rolls. Before I had you guys ripping off a long piece of tape and then twirling it, we're gonna do this like this. You're gonna do about a foot long of tape and then instead of in detaching it you're just going to hold it with the tape hanging down and twirl it until you get a tape roll like this now you want to make sure you twirl it so that the sticky side is on the outside but once you have that you can just rip it right off finish twirling the ends and now we're ready to start our flowers <clears throat> You can do as many or as few flowers as you like, but I like to start with one big one and I'm gonna put it somewhere that's not in the direct middle. I'm gonna move it over to the side a little bit. I'm gonna take my tape roll and I'm just gonna start in what will be the middle of the flower and I'm going to make a little spiral of tape as I go pushing it down, letting it be nice and lumpy because we want it to be lumpy because in the end, that will give us our flower texture. Doing another little roll of tape and I'm just gonna continue the spiral. Oh, my tape's coming unrolled. Pushing it down. Now, sometimes this tape doesn't stick very easily. If you have to stop and just mush it down a little bit, feel free to do that. Give it a twist. Rip it off. Keep going. Until you get a flower. It's about the right size. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. All of these ridges and bumps that are created by the tape are going to help it look like a real flower in the end, like there's real flower petals. And I want to point out that you don't have to make this a perfect circle. You can make it kind of lumpy around the edges if you want, just like if you were looking at a rose that was in bloom, it's not going to be a perfect circle. Some of the flower petals will be open. So now that you have that, you can go on to do as many more flowers as you like. I like to do things in odd numbers, so in my original painting I did seven flowers, but you can do three or five or two or four. Which one of those two were not odd numbers? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna add my final flower down here. And I just wanna point out that each one of these flowers was only two or three long twists of tape. It didn't take very much, but you can make these flowers as large or as small as you want. And you can make them even more three-dimensional by adding additional layers on top of your first two or three rolls of tape that you did. 
And I want to point out also you should make your flowers not all the same exact size necessarily because that's not usually how they grow in nature. So feel free to let them be their own sizes. We don't have to compare them to each other. They're all equally valid flowers. And now this one here that I just did, it's a little flat in the middle. So I'm gonna take another small roll of tape, just about two inches long, roll that up, and I'm gonna stick it in the middle and give it sort of a little raised center. And that's it for the flowers. Next, we're gonna go on to the leaves. So I wanted to show you the finished picture. These leaves here, what we're gonna do is an outline of the leaf shape, and then we can fill in a line in the middle. And we can add as many or as few leaves as we want. Not all the flowers need to have leaves. They can all be different sizes. But we're basically gonna do the same technique with rolling the tape, so the sticky sides on the outside. I'm gonna start with my largest flower down here and I'm gonna give it one big leaf. I'm just gonna sort of shape it kind of like a lemon. Kind of like an oval or an eyeball shape or a lemon. And once that's on there, I can mold it to be whatever shape I want. I can make the point really pointy, okay? So your leaves will take a couple of steps. There's first, there's rolling the tape, then there's putting a basic leaf shape onto the canvas. And then you can mold it to be the exact shape you want. So now I just have a leaf that has like a vein going down the center. I'll put one more leaf over here. Now with the smaller leaves, You can fill them in, they can be solid. They don't necessarily need to have a vein. And also I wanna point out, if you want your leaf to go around the edge of the canvas, you can do that too. I always like to use the edges of the canvas because it gives it a more three-dimensional effect. So we'll finish up this leaf here. Just gonna pick up where I left off with that roll of tape. And I'm gonna continue Sort of roll that around. Give it a little pinch there to make it the shape I want. And then I'm gonna add one more little piece in the middle, like this. Okay. Now I'm gonna move on to do the rest of the leaves. I've got all of my flowers and my leaves placed where I'm going to have them. And the next step now is to get our tissue paper. 
which we're going to be tearing into little strips and little pieces like we have done before. So for now, I'm just gonna set this outside of the way so that I have some room to tear up my tissue paper. Now, if it's already folded, you can just grab big chunks of it, rip it into little pieces. They do not all need to be the same size. They can be different lengths because you have different parts of your flower that will need to be filled in and different parts of your leaves. So we'll start with about that much. And if I need to, I can go back and tear up some more. I like to tear it instead of cut it because I like the rough edges. I feel like it looks nicer when it's done than if everything were straight lines, you'd be able to see that through the Mod Podge and it wouldn't be quite as cool looking, but no big deal if you do any straight lines. I'm just gonna move this over to the side. And we will get started. Now we're gonna use our stiff bristled brush. We wanna have our little pile of tissue paper handy. We'll just start anywhere you like on your canvas. And you're gonna put a little piece of tissue paper over the sticky parts of the tape and then use your brush to jam it down in there so that it gets in all of the folds of your rolled tape. We wanna keep that tape texture nice and lumpy. Now, as you go, you do wanna have little pieces of tissue paper that overlap. So you want not just the tape to be covered, but the area around it, because when we glue this down, it's gonna act as literal glue to hold the tape onto the canvas in case it doesn't get, doesn't stay sticky. Okay, so you can just go around the outside edge of each flower and each leaf. So you leave a little overlapping, jam it down in there. And make sure you have everything covered. Once you have all of the sticky parts covered in tissue paper, you can go through and just push everything down really hard to make sure it's nice and stuck on there. If your canvas is a little bit springy, you can actually pick it up, put your hand underneath and push on it like a sandwich from both sides. Because we don't want those little roses popping up. So I'm just gonna press it down all the way around and now it's time to start working on putting some Mod Podge in these flowers. Now you're gonna keep using the same brush or you can switch to another brush if you like. Um, I like this one because it's nice and stiff, but when I fill in the rest of the area, I might use a slightly bigger brush. So you're still gonna need a couple of pieces of tissue paper because we're gonna add some to what's already here and you'll need your little bottle of Mod Podge. Okay, shake it up, take the lid off, make sure if there's a little white cap on here, you take that off. 
That just helps keep it fresh so that it doesn't get dried out. Give it a little shake. You're gonna do one flower at a time, okay? So I'm just gonna start down here in this down, this corner, and I'm just gonna start with a few drops in the middle of the flower. I'm gonna spread that around. I wanna get up underneath any overlapping layers. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way over the top of the flower and I still have quite a, a lot on my brush. So I'm gonna come out here and I wanna get underneath these little flaps that are sticking out from the edge of the flower. I'm gonna put Mod Podge underneath there and then I'm gonna mush it down with my brush and then put Mod Podge on top again. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, underneath and on top. So you want that to be the case for just about everything you do. There needs to be a layer of Mod Podge, then a layer of tissue paper, then another layer of Mod Podge, okay? Now this flower is totally covered. All the tissue paper I had on it is glued down. Now I'm gonna add a couple of extra pieces. Here's a little trick you can do with your brush. You can use your kind of gluey brush to just pick up one little piece of tissue paper at a time, stick it down on there, poke it down, and then a little bit more Mod Podge on top. It's coming, the Mod Podge is coming out faster than I want it to, so I'm using more than I, I'm telling you to use, but you really only need a few drops at a time. Go in and make sure that all the way around the outside of my flower, that the edge, the edge of the tape where it meets the canvas right here is sealed in with at least a double layer of tissue paper and Mod Podge. And as you're working, you wanna turn your canvas so that you can see it from all angles, so that you're not just looking at it from one perspective the whole time because it's important that, because we're working three-dimensionally, you have to get all the way around the edges of everything. Okay, I'm gonna put one more little piece on this one for now, and then I'm gonna move on to another flower. And I'm gonna go through, and as I'm going through and things start to dry, I'll come back and check on this, make sure that there's no little bubbles underneath the tissue paper, because that will make it really hard to paint when it's dry. So I'm gonna move on to another flower. And I'm gonna start this one by the edge here. Just glue down this edge of these leaves underneath those overlapping pieces. And while you'll work on one flower at a time, you really just wanna concentrate on one area. You don't necessarily want to spread Mod Podge all over your entire flower because it does dry pretty quickly. So you'll want to make sure to work on just one little area at a time. Like I'm going to do these two leaves on the bottom. And when I have them nice and secure, then I will go in and start on the petal part of the flower, the rose petals. Layer Mod Podge on top. Come over here with a little piece. So one of the things you wanna look for while you are putting on your layers of tissue paper is holes. We don't want any holes. So in our tape, there's lots of little gaps, right? Like, I don't know if you can see right here, there's a little hole there that's not covered by tissue paper and I wanna make sure I put a piece of tissue paper over that because otherwise, when it comes time to paint, that's gonna be a little gap where no paint will go. And then when you're looking at your finished flower, you're gonna see a hole in the paint and it's gonna kinda of take away from the effect of three-dimensional awesomeness that you've been working on so far. If you get too much Mod Podge at once, just spread it around so it doesn't go to waste. Put some on the edge of this. And you can have as much tissue paper on the canvas as you like. 
Don't worry about keeping it just on the flowers. Unless, of course, if you are running low on tissue paper and you're trying to conserve it, then you can just concentrate on the flowers, as long as you're getting around those edges. Underneath and on top. Another layer on top. Bloop. Oh yeah, sometimes it makes noises like that. It goes bloop. Okay. You do wanna do your best not to get this Mod Podge all over your hands. It's way stickier than glue. And it's a little bit harder to wash off. So in the interest of keeping your hands clean, if you do spill any of this on the surface that you're working on, you wanna wipe it up while it's still wet. If you try to wait until it dries, it's just gonna kind of be there like glue. And it's not easy to peel off like glue is. All right, I'm gonna finish the rest of these flowers in super fast motion. Now that I have everything covered, I wanna do a final check to make sure that there are no gaps along the edges of the flowers. So I'm gonna look at my canvas from all different angles. And from where I'm sitting, which is over here, I see a gap right here between the flower and the canvas where there's no tissue paper. So I'm gonna fix that up real quick. Put down some fresh Mod Podge because the stuff there has already dried. And then I'm gonna like patch it. Like there's a little hole and I'm gonna patch it up. And I'm gonna use more than one piece of tissue paper because I wanna make sure it's really well fixed so that 
in the future my beautiful flowers don't come detached from the canvas. So that's why we wanna make sure that they stay nice and tightly glued down. Okay, looking at it from that angle again, it looks pretty good. Now, a final thing you can do, first of all, get all the Mod Podge off of your brush by just sort of wiping it on the blank spots of your canvas. Now, if you want to, you can add some more crinkled tissue paper in between these flowers where there's no tissue paper because I know it may be hard to see in the light, but what we have now is we've got our flower that's three-dimensional and then there's kind of like a halo of tissue paper around it where each flower is kind of outlined by tissue paper and that's okay, but we're gonna put some random pieces of tissue paper in there to sort of break that up. So I'm just gonna put few drops here and there. Okay, I'm gonna spread this around. I'm gonna do this very quickly so that the Mod Podge doesn't dry. And what you can do even if you want to is just sprinkle your remaining pieces of tissue paper in these areas. They can be wrinkly, okay? They can be flat. The idea is just that they are breaking up that non-textured space between our flowers, okay? Now that I have those couple pieces on there, a little bit more glue or Mod Podge, and I'm just gonna glue them down. I personally like the wrinkly texture. I think that gives any piece of artwork a little bit more character and interest. I like. I like looking at something and feeling like I want to touch it with my eyeballs because it's so textured. So as far as I'm concerned, the more texture, the better. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of wrinkly old tissue paper, all shapes and sizes in between my flowers. Let's see, it's a little better. Do one more here. And then I'm gonna do just a few little pieces up here because there's really nothing going on up here. And I would like to change that. Bloop. Mush, mush, mush. I'm really being quite messy about this. You can do it a lot neater than I'm doing it, like one piece at a time, for example, but I am rushing a little bit. Just wanna fill those in and get rid of any little scraps of tissue paper that I have. I don't wanna rip up any more necessarily, but you know, Better not to waste what we've already torn up, and then we don't have to worry about finding a place to keep all that torn up tissue paper, because it tends to fly around and sometimes pets can eat it, and we don't want that. Okay, so now that you're all done, you have everything sealed in around the edges. Oh, I've got one more little spot here. So I used up all my tissue paper and then needed some more. Found another hole. So put a little bit more over that. Okay, do one last check. Oh, there's another one. So sometimes what happens is as the Mod Podge and tissue paper dry, um, they lift up a little bit from the surface as they're drying and that can cause holes where you thought you had it all sealed in, but then you just notice, like I'm noticing right now, that there's some spots that need to be fixed again. All right, looking all the way around the edges, found another spot. And this step, the whole step of doing the Mod Podge and the tissue paper can be very time consuming, it can take a long time, but it's worth it to do it well, because then you have a very sturdy piece of art that you could literally, once it's dry, toss around 
and it would not be damaged at all. Okay. All right, so we're all done with video one, which is step one of the roses on a blue field, I think we called it, for sculptured painting. Tomorrow we'll be filming the part two, which will be painting. Um, before we do that, I wanna let you guys know that there are some new paint colors that you can pick up here at the art house. There's white paint, black paint, and metallic gold. Now you don't need to pick those up. You have enough uh, paint and art supplies to do the following three or four projects, but if you would like white and black and gold paint, whenever it is convenient for their parents, they can come and pick it up here at the art house. Um, but that's about it. So until next time, have a great day.